talking about focus, right? Um, how could someone actually shift their focus to focus more on what they can control instead of um, focusing on the things that they can't control? A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And sometimes we think so much of this journey of a thousand miles. We think of the thousand and we get very scared. We think of the thousand and it feels so daunting. So maybe what we can do is let's just do the next best thing that we can do. Maybe it means just waking up and making your own breakfast and making that one phone call to that one client, you know, instead of like, oh, I got these 10 clients I need to call. Yeah, but I don't know whether they will all respond to me or not. Are they also stressed about their business? And then that brings us into this downward spiral of thinking. But we actually haven't taken any action at all. <laughs> and action is where we can feel accomplishment. If we have taken that one action for that day, we can pat ourselves on the back and say we did it. But if we only think it and we don't do it, then we actually have not moved. And that makes us more fearful, right? That makes us feel that we, we, have, we are stagnant and stay where we are. Hello everyone, welcome to The Achiever Show, where our goal at the show is to bring to you top entrepreneurs, authors, and business owners to share with you their strategies for you to achieve your success as well. Now, in today's session, we have an amazing lady here. Her name is Yo Sha En. Now, Sha En is a psychologist and a speaker with the desire to help others to become happier in their life. Now, she runs a company called The Happiness Scientist, where their goal is to help people to live life on their own terms. And throughout the years, Sha En has been traveling around the world, speaking on different conferences, different events, at the same time, to be featured as a TEDx speaker as well, to share her knowledge and to help more people out there. She was also being featured on on podcasts, on news channels, and also on newspaper as well, on her initiative to help others to achieve happiness in their life. Now, for those of you who didn't know, Sha'an is also a co-author of a book called Road to Happiness alongside the well-known Jack Canfield. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today Sha'an will be sharing with us a very interesting topic called How to Master Your Emotion and to Live Life on Your Terms. Now, for those of you who are in search of your purpose and your happiness in life, this episode here is for you. So, Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Yo Sha En and let's just dive deep directly into the interview. I hope you enjoy. Hello everyone. First of all, thank you so much for being on the show. And again, today is our really our pleasure to have uh, Sha En here with us. And uh, Sha En, we are really excited to have you on the show to really share with us your knowledge and also strategies to help our audience today to really uh, move through this tough time together. So once again, welcome Sha En to the show. Thank you, Shui. Thank you for having me. Really excited to be able to share with your audience as well. Our pleasure. So, Sharon, my first question to you is that um, in this crisis, as you guys know, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is happening all over the places. People can't go to work. So, especially in situations like this, whereby most people are driven by fear, um, how can we still stay productive? How can we still stay motivated during times like this? Yeah, I think we've got to learn how to manage fear and understand what fear is all about. You know, fear is actually the body's response to threat. So when we feel threatened and because COVID-19 is a, it's a, something we can't actually see, right? I mean, if it was like a lion charging at us, at least we can run away and hide somewhere. But this is something we can't see and it's causing so much uncertainty and therefore our fear response kicks in in order to protect us. So that's something we must understand about fear. And, and fear isn't always bad. If it protects us, there's something good about it. But it becomes bad when it overwhelms us and causes us to stay stagnant and causes us to withdraw to the point that we can't be productive. So one of the ways in which we can manage that is to recognize, uh, number one, when you're feeling that fear. What does that fear feel like for you? Um, is it a lot of intrusive thoughts that come into your mind? Is it uh, your heart starting to palpitate? Is it that you're starting to sweat? So first of all, once we recognize the symptoms of stress or fear, the next thing is how do we manage it? So one of the things that really, really helps is to break the cycle by first of all, pausing. We recognize there's fear. Let's pause first instead of reacting to the fear. And once we pause, we take a very deep breath. And by deep breath, you know, it's like four seconds in and eight seconds out. You know, the out breath has to be longer than the in breath so that we can get all that negative energy and stress out of our system helps to regulate our nervous system and allows us to then calm down. And then the next step is um, to be able to label our emotions. So if we're feeling anxious or if our body is feeling tense, all we need to do is just acknowledge it and say it out loud. So for example, I can feel my heart racing. Um, that feels like a headache that's building up over so many days. 
um, I think I'm stressed. I feel stressed. So by labeling out and saying it out, we're actually assuring our mind and our body and saying, okay, I see you. I know what's going on. You know, we can do this. So these few steps actually help our fear to, to you know, minimize so that we can re, you know, go back into our normal way of thinking, which is more logical. And then that allows us to also be productive. Right. I really love your point about uh, number one is that breathing exercise that you need to do. And also uh, the second thing, which I find it really powerful is also recognizing that, uh, that feeling inside you because a lot of times we let emotions control us instead of us recognizing mm. that emotions and controlling that emotions as well. So, um, um, especially in times like this, right? Um, in your own perspective, what do you think are the most common fear that most people are having right now in the market? Yeah, I think fear of losing their jobs, you know, similarly for myself. I think starting in February or March, we start getting emails and texts saying that, oh, sorry, this project cannot continue. And it boils down to our livelihood, right? So I think most people are afraid that they won't get any new business or whatever business they were doing before COVID started, maybe it's no longer relevant. So then what? Are my skills still, can I still use the skills that I have now to make money in the new market? So I think the number one fear is definitely livelihood. Um, probably the second, the second fear is the uncertainty, like what's going to happen? Nobody knows, nobody can predict. Is there going to be a second wave of the virus? What then? How do we respond? Is it going to affect my family? You know, if I have young children at home, how is it going to affect their health? If I have elderly at home, you know, will they get through this alive, literally? So there are, I think these are the two big fears. And I think it's very normal to have these fears during times like these. Right. So talking about, let's say, the fear of uncertainty, people do not really know what to do. So number one is that uh, they recognize the fear. And number two is that they do the breathing activity to really calm their nerves down. Then uh, what's the next step for them in order for them to actually break through this fear? Yeah, I think it's really important to focus on what you can control. So when I work with clients, when I do training, we always get them to do, do two concentric circles. The one on the inside is what you can control. So there are some things that fall into that circle. How you think, your thoughts, your attitude, your responses, your emotions, your actions. These are things that you can control. You can control wearing a mask. You know that it's the right thing to do, so wear it. You can control how much learning you do during this time. Right? You can control whether if you have three hours, you decide to upgrade your skill or you decide to watch Netflix. These are choices that you can make. Right? Uh, but on the outer circle is the things that you cannot control. So government policies, what the media reports, whether other people follow the rules or not, uh, whether uh, the US and China get along. These are things that we cannot control. But what happens is that many people focus their time, energy and resources on the outer circle, thinking that somehow we have control over those things. Um, but the truth is that there are some things that we have to accept that's beyond us. Um, it doesn't mean giving up. It's not weakness to accept things. But it's knowing that in these times, this time, energy and resources are very limited. So do we really want to focus all our energy on the things we cannot control? Or can we channel these very precious resources into things that we can focus on right now in this moment so that we can move ahead? Right. So um, talking about focus, right? Um, how could someone actually shift their focus to focus more on what they can control instead of um, focusing on the things that they can't control? Because a lot of times for most people, uh, their mind actually controls them. So uh, whenever they <laughs> feel that they are actually thinking about something negative, they find it hard to switch it to something positive. So how, what are some of the strategies that they can actually apply to actually shift their focus? Yeah, so I mean, the earlier steps definitely help because you can't shift your focus if you're not in a neutral state. And that breathing exercise and all the labeling of emotion actually allows you to come from negative to neutral. When you're neutral, now you can, and you focus on the things that you can control. One thing that is really important to ask is, what is the next best thing that I can do? You know, just, it just requiring one step. I think it was Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher who said, you know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And sometimes we think so much of this journey of a thousand miles. We think of the thousand and we get very scared. We think of the thousand and it feels so daunting. So maybe what we can do is that let's just do the next best thing that we can do. Maybe it means just waking up and making your own breakfast and making that one phone call to that one client. You know, instead of like, oh, I got these 10 clients I need to call. Yeah, but I don't know whether they will all respond to me or not. Are they also stressed about their business? And then that brings us into this downward spiral of thinking. 
but we actually haven't taken any action at all. <laughs> and yeah. action is where we can feel accomplishment. If we have taken that one action for that day, we can pat ourselves on the back and say we did it. But if we only think it and we don't do it, then we actually have not moved. And that makes us more fearful, right? That makes us feel that we, we, ha- we are stagnant and stay where we are. So yeah, you know, just, just that one step. And when you've done one step and you feel like you can do it, take the next step. So you're always in movement, even if they are small. Right, I, I totally agree with you. And just to add on, uh, it's okay, it's good for us to actually have a long-term goal which we have a direction to uh, move forward to. But also, I think one of the most important things is really to break your goals down to daily habits so that you know what to focus mm-hmm. on. And uh, number two is that it doesn't seem that overwhelmed for you to actually do it. So um, mm-hmm. I really totally agree with you on that point as well. And um, I'm just curious um, about your personal story because... Uh, from you being uh, actually a nobody at the start and developing yourself into a somebody uh, teaching all this positive psychology to all these people out there, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have faced in your life so far which allows you to actually realize that I need to change and then uh, you became who you are right now? Mm. Yeah, good question. Actually, it began really early. So from like, say age 10 all the way to 14 you know i guess the preteen and teenage years um, i was bullied very often emotional bullying name calling you know and, and all of that it was a very very stressful time and really at the time it was not so positive obviously I, I was a pessimist i thought i was a victim i thought uh everybody the world is against me you know what have i done to be in this situation um i was very grateful to have a very good teacher who kind of woke me up by, by letting me know, you know, Sean, you have a choice in how you can respond to all these bullies. Um, you can either believe that whatever they say about you is true. And I did. I really thought I was the ugliest person in the world. You know, all those negative thinking. Um, but she said, what are the facts? Look, look at what you've done. Look at what you've managed to accomplish. Um, and don't worry about their words for a while. Just focus on yourself. Build yourself up. And I think that that woke me up to the possibility that I could be the person to do it. I always thought something in my external circumstance must change for me to believe in myself. Like I must have parents who never fight. I must have friends who love me. You know, all, all those boxes that we yeah. create in our mind. Yeah, it was only when she, she uh, you know, gave me that confidence that I started to work on myself. And I realized so much of it depends on ourselves and our ability to see things differently. Yeah, so I guess from there, I started, you know, telling myself, okay, never mind, today is going to be a good day. Um, People can say all those things to me, but today is going to be a good day. And I realized that by just telling myself that, my own thoughts started to change about what they said to me. And I found the courage to stand up to them. Uh, And that's kind of when I think things started moving in a much more positive direction uh, in my life. So when I went to um, study positive psychology, it was because I've had some of these kind of experiences that made me believe that, hey, there is something more, you know, to these experiences, you know, could I, could I find out how to do it more intentionally rather than go through this and realize on the back end, oh, so that's how you build resilience. <laughs> yeah, so that year of studying uh, positive psychology also gave me a lot of insight into what I can do to make my life better to, to really enjoy uh, this journey, uh, all the ups and downs of it. Yeah. Right, okay. So um, when you started uh, to speak, right, there will be people who say that uh, you're just too young or you do not know, even know what you're talking about. Or sometimes people say that uh, they, don't, uh, they don't need motivation. They, they misunderstood uh, having positive psychology means that keep on telling themselves they're good enough. They don't need all this positive affirmation or all this uh, motivation in their life. So in your early days, how do you actually deal with uh, comments like that? Yeah, I think it boils down to really believing and being confident about what you're doing. And I remember after I graduated, I was so excited. I mean, I still am. I was super passionate. I really believed in it. And so I, I went around just telling anybody who would listen to me, hey, do you, have you heard of this thing? It's, it's amazing. And yes, I got my fair share of negative responses. Like saying, oh yeah, this one, uh, it's like fluffy rainbows and unicorns. What for do this? Cannot make money one. Uh, but I believed in it, you know, and I believed in my, myself as well. Um, and I kept, and I, you know, I, I told myself, if it makes me feel so good and it can help people, this is something I must continue to pursue. 
So maybe it was just that I don't know how to run a business. So I went to learn it. Maybe it's just I'm not, not speaking to the right people who see the way I see. Find the right people to speak to. You know, uh, and when they said I'm too young, yeah, I had a gentleman uh, who told me, you know, you, you look like you're just born. <laughs> what can you teach me? I've lived 65 years. And so I responded to him. I said, sir, I, I'm not here to diminish your wisdom. I'm sure there's a lot that, that you can teach me. But if you don't mind, uh, give me the benefit of the doubt. Let me share what I have to share. And if really it's no use to you, then I'll, I'll just be thankful for your time and openness in listening to me. Um, and after the talk, he actually said to me, he said, wow, this old fella can learn something from a baby like you. Uh, and, and the truth was, it was not about me. It was about the fact that I went to study this very rigorously. And there's a lot of gems in that research that sometimes it's stuck in the research journals. It doesn't come out as practical advice to people. Nowadays, lah, it's been 10 years. Um, so I realized that, hey, you know, I, I'm not going in there to tell them I'm great because that will put people off. I'm going in there to share something that is very valuable. At the end of the day, they have to decide whether it's valuable for them. You know, and right. it's not about me telling them, look, this is, this is really fantastic. You know, you decide. If this is good for you, take it and go and make something about it. Yeah, so that, that confidence and that passion, I think is really important. Right, I really love your fact that you said that uh, you need to believe very strongly in something that you really want to do, which I think a lot of people like that because the moment they face failure, they say that they're not good enough, hence uh, they stop doing what they're actually passionate about or what they are actually loving to do. So I think that uh, belief is one of the most important things that a lot of us should have in, uh, in our pursuit to our goals as well. So... Um, mm. I was just wondering, as I was scrolling through your profile, right, I actually saw that you actually co-authored a book called The Road to Success with uh, one of the very renowned speakers called Jack Canfield. So um, how did that experience came by? Or could you just share a little bit about what were some of the things that is uh, interesting we should share in the book? Yeah, so in, you know, I was, I was, I guess during the period of 20 maybe about five, six years ago, I was really going through a very personal journey in terms of knowing myself, understanding what, what it takes. Uh, and so I went through a lot of coaching programs, uh, being coached myself. Yeah. Uh, and one of the programs was Jack Canfield's coaching uh, based on his book, 60 Principles of Success. Um, and I remember one of the exercises was called, uh, the, first, the first principle was take responsibility for your life. 100% responsibility. And I thought that I was... <laughs> but they made us do an exercise to say like, you know, for every frustration that you have, what responsibility have you taken in order to try to deal with it? Yeah. And as I was writing and filling out that sheet, I realized, oh, I think I'm only taking 60% responsibility for my life. <laughs> and that was the reason why I still experienced those frustrations. Mm -hmm. So through the coaching program, I was very determined to overcome all of that, to get as close to 100 as possible. I mean, it's, I think perfection is not something I aim yeah. for, but I want to try. Um, and so I found that the coaching program was very profound um, and, and very helpful for me. So when they extended the opportunity for all of us as students to contribute to this book, of course I wanted to, to be part of it. Um, and at the time, uh, my children were very small. So I wanted to do something, uh, share something with other parents about what success can look like. And most of the time, people think success means your student, your, your child must do very well in school. <laughs> at least in the Singapore, maybe in Malaysian yeah. context. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for me, I, I felt that success as a parent means you must, you must know who you are. You must lead with values. You must, you must model for your child the way you want them to be in the world. And that means taking 100% responsibility for your life. So right. I wrote about that. I wrote about that parenting, what parenting success can look like. Um, but it's very unconventional coming from a Singaporean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, I understood. So, um, I was also, um, one thing is that something that I find really interesting is that I was looking at your company's uh, profile and also your company's name. And I find that I really love your company name, which is called the Happiness Scientist, which I find that uh, <laughs> something really interesting. So, is there any meaning behind this name? Why you created it? Why you name it as Happiness Scientist? Because I find it really interesting. I think it's just for me, but then I find it really interesting. Uh -huh, yeah, you're not the first person. I think everybody loves <laughs> the name and find it very catchy. Yeah. And actually, it's, it's, it's very simple. I realized that after 10 years of doing this work, the one thing that I really want is for people to be happy. 
I know happy has a, sometimes got a bad name la, that is like all just smiling emojis but actually to me happiness has a very much deeper meaning um, and that's really the impact I want when I interact with people I would like them to leave any training coaching program webinar whatever happier than, than before they came in and I want to do it with science science means the research the evidence it must it must make sense in the science because we want to be able to empower people with things that actually work. So I don't want to be known as someone who just went to Google for the strategies and like, nah, give to you. But it's really based on like 30, 40 years of research. This has proven to work. And I want to shorten that journey for everybody. If we are suffering, if we are struggling, then why do I want to give you something that doesn't work? Right? Yeah. So happiness scientists is yeah, really empowering people to be happier using the science of positive psychology. Right. So based on your own definition, right, what is the meaning of true happiness? <laughs> okay, very good question. Uh, to me, uh, I think based on my experience, based on the research, uh, I have a very simple definition. Happiness is daring to truly live. So daring means the courage. We, we must have courage to live a full life. I find that many people decide to stay very small, decide to uh, stay very safe because they are afraid of what people think of them. They are afraid of what the narrative is and, and afraid of breaking convention. There's so many fears like we started our conversation. Yeah. So I think to, to be happy, we need to have courage to push some of these boundaries, um, to, to try things that we've never tried before. And if we fail, at least we try it. Uh, the next one is truly. So being authentic to who you are. You know, uh, people want to put you into a box. They see you as a Chinese woman for, for myself. Oh, it means you must be like this. But must I? Uh, uh, is that true to me, who I am? Yeah. You know, um, if that's not true, then how, how can I be happy if I can't be authentically and, and just be myself? If I always have to put on a mask, for example. And then the last one is living. Uh, uh, sometimes I talk to people in corporate and I see their face and they are living physically, but... Yeah. You know, there's no light in their eyes and they're just like walking zombies, like going through the motion, you know. And I think living comes with passion. Living means that you experience everything that life has to give to you. The good times and the bad times. The good times you celebrate and you really go all out and, and enjoy it. The bad times, yes, you struggle. The bad times, yes, it's painful. But that's what life is. You know, you can't expect life to always be a bit of roses and but when we go through that, we learn lessons. And those lessons make us powerful and strong. So yeah, that's, that's how I see happiness. So it, it's not just like, oh, every day, happy, smile, smile. <laughs> right, right. Well, that, that, that is something very powerful because I think that uh, one of the most important things, one of the most powerful lessons which I learned from you today is really to be able to live life on our own terms, uh, to try things that we have never tried before and also uh, to move out of our comfort zone to really do the things that we want to do for a long time because uh, like you said, we only live once, we only have this one life, uh, one life even though if we fail, uh, at least we try. So I think that is something really powerful for me and also I believe for all of our audience who is watching this right Right now so um, with that Sharon I really thank you for your time for today because I really learned something so much and I believe that all of our audience has so gained tremendous amount of value through this uh, interview session with you today so again Sharon thank you so much for being here on the show yeah. really appreciate it thank you Shui. thank you so much and I'm so grateful for, for your time spending with me as well hello everyone thank you so much for watching the achiever show if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can get first-hand update on our show where we'll be releasing two episodes every month to help you to unleash your deepest potential once again thank you so much for watching and stay extraordinary i'll see you the next time